Welcome to another episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. We are joined today by Jeanette Anderson. With almost four decades of launching, leading, and mentoring over 250 businesses, that's right, 250, Jeanette knows what works for entrepreneurs, so we've invited her here today to share all of her brilliance. Jeanette, how are you doing? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me here, and thanks for being a a wonderful stand for people to play a bigger game faster. I love it. Well, look, I love everything that you're about. Um, When I first came into contact with the type of work that you do, I was curious. I'm like, okay, you know, this seems like somebody I can have a real conversation with and bring some value to my audience. So if you can just kind of break down for us how you got to this stage and who you serve. Okay. Well, the how I got to this stage is pretty... um... Pretty, it would be a long story. Let's just say I was born entrepreneurial. I think I came out of the womb with a briefcase, which my mother did not appreciate, uh, um, and actually became very entrepreneurial as a way to deal with a really challenging childhood, lots of poverty, lots of scarcity, uh, and challenges. You know, when we're kids we're, and we're young, we don't complicate things. I really wanted the book Heidi. My mom, I begged her and begged her and begged her. She was a single mom working lots of jobs in between her five husbands. And um, she turned around one day and yelled at me, no, we can't afford it. Now, that really shocked me. Not that I heard that, because I'd heard that a lot growing up, but the look on her face that I remember as a five-year-old seeing that look and deciding I never wanted to see that look on another person's face again. Not hers, not mine, not anyone else's. I can remember viscerally to this day that decision. And so that kind of started my entrepreneurial journey. So I have been in business startup and turnaround for actively for 40 years, um, except for those little aberrant periods when I forget and get enticed back into corporate when I think, oh, stability and, and benefits and so forth. And I go back into the corporate world. And after about two years, I go, oh, no, I remember why I hate this politics and bureaucracy. And yes, so am I. And so I leave and go back out and start my business. I've had four iterations of my business, um, all in the marketing strategy, um, business startup areas, like helping entrepreneurs start their businesses. Um, I had an event planning firm, a marketing agency and consulting firm. Uh, and now I do a lot of coaching and work with uh, women who are, Hashtag not done by a long shot. So I specialize in working with maturepreneurs. So those are people who would rather inspire than retire. A really big and growing demographic in the marketplace. Um, There are literally millions of people who either can't afford to retire or simply don't choose to because they got another 20 or 30 years of contribution left in them. And not a lot of support and resources for those people. In fact, a lot of active ageism and contra support uh, or, or, you know, obstacles for them. So I work with them and with women who really just want to learn how to profit from living their purpose. Um, I love my work still stupidly in love with it after 40 years. Uh, And now I just like doing it from various places around the world. I live a mobile lifestyle. I call myself polyhomerous, which often confuses people or gets them to kind of tilt their head and giggle. But basically I'm, I used to say homeless, but that alarmed people. So I am just living a mobile digital laptop lifestyle uh, because I'm pathologically allergic to winter. So I go somewhere where it's nice in the winter. And um, yeah, love supporting women in stepping into their purpose and their power and profit. That's a long answer to your question, but (laughs) that's how I got here. But I think at five years old, you might be the youngest entrepreneur we've had on the podcast so far. You started five years old. So welcome. You have a new record on the podcast. And I literally did because, you know, kids don't complicate things. So she said, no money. I thought, okay, solution, get money. So one day when she was at work, like a week later, I I hauled everything I could out of the house, priced it, because I'd seen someone have a garage sale a few weeks before. So I thought, I'll have a business and I will sell things and I'll get money. And so I did. I sold lots of household knickknacks and small appliances and pretty much whatever I could carry out of the house. 
I was very, very excited because I could count before I could read or almost before I could talk. And I, when she came home, I was so excited. Problem solution. I had $13.72. I ran up to her and said, look, mom, now we can get the book. She was a little less excited than I had anticipated. She was quite upset that a lot of her stuff was gone. <laughs> Thank you and took my money and made me go back and buy back what I could. And the kids wouldn't sell me back my toys, but the adults mostly gave us back everything. Um, or I bought it back. Um, and so I didn't get the book right away. I did eventually get it, but not right away. So many people would say that wasn't a very successful first venture, but I actually think it was because I learned three really important things. One is don't go into business with family. <laughs> I'm semi sort of kind of kidding, but not really. The second one is that we really can take our destiny into our own hands with entrepreneurship. Had I not had some constraints, I would have had the solution to the problem. I would have been able to be, do, and have what I wanted, which was have the book, um, as a result of my entrepreneurial efforts. So I really did fall in love with it at that point. And then the third one was that that, that pivotal point of deciding I didn't want to see that look on anyone's face of, of shame and anger and frustration again. So those three things really did put me on a path. So that was my first venture. My next venture was um, I franchised my lemonade stand because I couldn't get to all the corners. So I got the other three TV trays and I made three more si sets of signs and I got my mom to get me three more pictures. I recruited my friends from the housing tenement and I set them up on the other corners and I took 50% of the proceeds and they got the other 50%. So that was my first franchise. That was at six. Okay. And then my business with an employee was a daycare taking care of the kids in the housing tenement in the summer. And I was 11. My employee was a nine-year-old. I used to babysit. And I, you know, look back now and it's like, it was, a, it was a good venture. The parents got their kids babysat all day for $3 a day, which was, you know, kind of a lot back then. But, um, and the poor kids got peanut butter and jelly every single day. But I learned lots. So yeah, I have been entrepreneurial my whole life. <laughs> So how did we reach 250 businesses? What was the inspiration? Well, a lot of that is through training and working with high-end coaching programs, both my own and other people. So I've helped a number of people in our expertpreneur industry break through to the seven-figure uh, business levels. And by creating, launching, leading, and running their seven or their, um, you know, five-figure coaching programs. And so worked with um, probably about 80 of those businesses during that process, really mentoring them, coaching them over the course of a year, et cetera, um, and have done a lot of co coaching and consulting over the years. I've been at it 40 years, so it adds up. In fact, I think that number is actually fairly low. I should go back and count it again. Um, but direct businesses that I've worked with to help them grow their business. So and you know what? I want to know. I want to know more about your coaching program because you have so much to offer people. Could you tell us if it's one to one or one to many? Sure. Um, both. I have a hybrid program because I actually have um, I have a bit of a soapbox that I get on about this this coaching this world that we live in the kind of in, online entrepreneurial world, the expertpreneur world. I think there's a lot of gurus out there that are selling what I call pieces of the profit plane. They are leveraging solutions of here's how, you know, have an event and make a million dollars in a weekend or write your book in a weekend or do this or that thing. And those things do work at the top of the mountain when you have infrastructure and team and a list of 40,000 and, and cash flow and things like that. But they're selling these solutions to people who are coming up the mountain. And I get really frustrated because these people spend 10, 20, 30, 50 thousand dollars to buy these leveraging solutions, but they don't have the wherewithal to get ROI and to implement them because they don't have the context or they don't have the team or the list or the influence. And so they feel bad. They think it's them. It's not them. It's just the wrong solution at the wrong time or the wrong solution for them. Or they just don't have the schematic, the business model, to figure out how to put these disparate pieces together so that they can create a profit plane. But in most cases, the biggest issue is they don't have what I call a revenue runway. 
a consistent, reliable way of getting clients. Because if you don't have a place for your profit plan to take off and land on, it's going to crash, right? And right. I get mad at this industry for selling people these solutions that are premature at best and wrong at most um, when they don't have that revenue runway in place. So I decided to leave supporting these people selling these things and to go and create the program that allowed them to put that revenue runway in place. Now it's not for brand new entrepreneurs. It's for people who've been in business for a while, but aren't getting the momentum that they want because they, they don't have that revenue runway in place. They aren't clear on what I call the three whys and a what, why do you do what you do? There's our why is so important and so integral to how we can differentiate ourselves and stay on track and stay motivated and really connect with our, our prospects and fast track the no like um, trust factor. So why do you do what you do? Why do I need what you have? Why do I um, pick you versus everybody else I can pick? And what the heck do you sell? How do you package price and position it? Most people don't have that and basic sales ability and a clear plan for how to build their influence in their list in place in order to be able to get that momentum going. Once they've got that, then yeah, then you can start to build a profit plan and start to scale and grow and make the leap from solopreneur to business owner. But until you've got that in place, then you're going to be spinning your wheels, spending a lot of money and getting very little ROI. So the program that I created, the Wings Academy, is specifically to help women who want to get that foundation in place clear and solid so they can start to grow and scale and make a bigger impact. And um, I've spent about, <laughs> it always boggles my mind, Sherry, when I do the math, about 38 years in the personal development field, teaching personal development courses and coaching certification programs, and about 40 in business startup and turnarounds. So my specialty is getting the four inches between your ears working so the business can work. So we really work on mastering the inner and outer game of business because it's not just about you know, how do you market to your ideal market? It's also about how do you get yourself to pick up the phone and call them so you can have a sales call? How do you actually ask for what you're worth? And, and how do you break through some of those limiting beliefs? So it's working on both aspects of that. Um, and I love doing both sides of it. So uh, the Wings Academy addresses both. We've got it's a hybrid program because I also don't th believe in the drop and go stuff that is prevalent in this industry. Here's a lot of education that's just going to widen the gap between what you know and what you're doing. If education doesn't have implementation support in it, then I think it's a bad thing, frankly, because if there's no implementation support, they're going to learn the theory, not apply it, and not get value. So don't, if you're an entrepreneur listening to this, please, for the love of God, stop buying programs that don't have implementation support because you just will not get the value for the vast majority of you because people just don't do the work, right? Like it's, I can give you industry stats, uh, less than 20% finish programs that they buy, including very expensive ones because there's just not enough implementation support. So my program, the Wings Academy, is all about helping you with some of the education and then there's implementation coaching and there's accountability and there's the inner game pieces. There's a lot of components to it because I think we have to deal with the whole person and how they really, really can be successful instead of all the theory, which includes accountability, kicking some butt, holding their hands and hearts as they make the leap and kicking those butts, B-U-T-S, to the curb so that they will actually take the actions. Jeanette, I love it. I love it. So what is the length of the program? So they can uh, actually the best thing to do, because you know what? Um, it's not actually for everybody. In fact, it's it's only for people who are really at a stage where they're ready to kind of ramp up and do the work. So the best thing to do is to book a call with me. And so the best way to do that is to get on my calendar, which I can give you a link to put in the show notes, but you can email me at Jeanette, J-A-N-N-E-T-T-E -T -T -E, at bodacity.ca. 
Because here's what I'm a big advocate of. Um, you can go and look at the program. Happy to give you the website, but you don't know if you need it. And I don't know if it's right for you until we talk. And if it's not, I have a lot of other resources, my coaching and other people I can refer you to if that's better for where you're at. I really want people to buy the right thing at the right stage. And for some people, they're not ready for wings yet. And for some, they're beyond it. It's, it's, um, it's, they've got most of it in place. So maybe coaching would be better or someone else's program. So the best thing to do is email me. Let's talk about where you are. And then if it's the right solution, I'm happy to tell you all about it. I know that there is the discovery call, but if they mm -hmm. aren't right for wings, what other options do you have in terms of resources to work with you directly? They can work with me in terms of coaching. Uh, I have a podcast that, of course, they're welcome to go and listen to. We have a Facebook community where there's lots of resources and opportunities to ask questions and promote yourself. Frankly, I do not understand uh, groups and communities that support business people or business women who say, we want to help you grow your business, but whatever you do, don't promote yourself. There's a bit of an oxymoron in that that I just think is kind of wrong. So we encourage you to promote yourself on What You Got Wednesdays. Not all the time. It's not about spamming. It is about getting better at self-promotion because, frankly, many women suck at that. So I want them to have a good, safe place where they can do that. And lots of other members may need what they have. So um, the Facebook group is the Purpose and Profit Sisterhood. And the podcast is the Purpose and Profit Sisterhood. But I also have a podcast coming out and potentially a separate community, I'm not sure, called the Maturepreneur Podcast because, you know, as we change, our demographic changes. And I have not too long ago become very personally aware of ageism and the fact that it's alive and well. You mix that in with some sexism and it's actually kind of daunting in terms of making some progress in some arenas, like if you wanted to get VC funding or a loan or anything like that for your business. Um, you know, the attitude is you should be off knitting now. And it's like, um, have you updated your attitude at all in the last three decades? Because that's just not the truth anymore. I work with clients who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. There's a woman here in Calgary who just won top 80 over, or top eight over 80 for starting a tech firm at 86. So people really need to adjust their attitudes around what's going on in the marketplace. Um, so yeah, happy to support um, people in both arenas, women who are growing themselves and their businesses, and especially the maturepreneur uh, market as well. So tell us, what's next? So if I wanted to know the right next step for the right stage, what is your recommendation? Oh, that's such a great question. And I love, uh, like I said, on my little soapbox rant, most people are struggling, not because they don't, they aren't smart, not because what they have is not of value, but because they're typically trying to apply the wrong tactic at the wrong stage of business. I have a success roadmap. It actually was a quiz, but we just took it down. We'll be putting it back up again as a quiz to support you in figuring out what stage you're at. And so that's another call that we could have to simply help you assess what stage are you at, what works at that stage, and what doesn't. And in fact, if you want, I'm happy to provide, an, a, um, it's a really fairly robust, aka somewhat complicated um, infographic that I'm happy to give to your people if you want to put it available yeah. for them. Yeah. Um, that helps them figure out what stage they're at and what who they need to be as a leader at that stage, because it's different, what you need to do in order to have what you want to have at each stage of business. So that's another thing that I do a lot of calls with people on is what is next? Because that's probably the biggest question for most entrepreneurs. How do I know what to invest my limited time, money, and energy in that will actually pay off? And the answer to that is different for each person at each stage. So that's one of my favorite things to do is to help people figure that out so that they can get rolling and go, ah, oh, I can be me and be authentic and still make progress. I don't have to try some cookie cutter solution that doesn't fit. Hallelujah. So yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, because I get emails all the time, you know, start a Facebook group. No, grow your YouTube page, yeah. you know, 
there's, there's always a solution for something. So I love what you have. Now, yeah. there is something very special happening in the month of November. Yes, I am doing a launch of my Wings Academy. Um, and so we're going to do a cohort launch this time coming in the new year. It'll be rolling enrollment. And so you still get one-to-one -one support and community support, but we're launching a community, the final cohort that's all going together in November. If people are interested in finding a solution that will really help you get the momentum that you want and deserve, I know that lots of people say, I have a great program and it'll help you. But just like you just said, most of those are cookie cutter solutions and cookies are meant for cookies, not business models. So Hi. I love, love, love to have a conversation with you because we are launching it mid-November. Give me a call, um, DM me on Facebook mm -hmm. at Susan Anderson or send me an email to Jeanette, J-A-N-N-E-T-T-E -T -T -E, at Audacity, B-O-D-A-C-I-T-Y dot C-A. Um, and or you can send a contact info from my site, bodacity.ca. Just send a smoke signal. Somehow get in touch and let's talk so that we can get you going, especially in 2024. Like enough of this spending money and not getting anywhere, getting frustrated with all the shoulds and have tos. What's the least amount of appropriate work for you to do to get the results you need to get to be the difference that you're here to be, because that's what I really care about, is helping you be the difference that only you can be. I love it. So one last question for you. Mm -hmm. If you had one piece of advice to share with someone on how to play big faster, what would it be? Um, I know you said think about that, and I'm trying to think of a short way to say this, but basically, you know what? It takes as much effort to play big as it does to, in fact, it takes less effort to play big than it does to play small. We spend a lot of effort in undermining ourselves and keeping ourselves small and telling ourselves all of the limiting beliefs that we work to maintain. Um, playing bigger is really a matter of just putting those stories aside and telling a better story. We're making it all up, so for the love of God and yourself, Tell a better story so that you can play that bigger game. Have more fun with it. Let it be faster and easier. In other words, get out of your own way so that you can be the difference that only you can be. I love it. And Jeanette, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. And until next time, play big faster.